Le jour de la Pentecôte, ils étaient tous ensemble dans le même lieu. Tout, tout à coup, il vint du ciel un bruit comme celui d'un vent impétué et il remplit toute la maison où ils étaient assises. Des langues semblables à des langues de feu leur apparurent séparèrent les unes des autres et se posèrent sur chacun d'eux. Et ils furent tous remplis du Saint-Esprit 
et se mirent à parler en d'autres langues selon que l'Esprit leur donnait de les exprimer. Or, il y avait en ces jours à Jérusalem des Juifs, hommes pieux de, tout le, de toutes les nations qui sont sous le ciel. Au bruit qui y lieu, la multitude accourut et elle fut confondue parce que chacun les entendait parler dans sa propre langue. Ils étaient tous dans l'étonnement et la surprise et ils se disaient les uns aux autres, « Voici ces gens qui parlent, ne sont-ils pas des gentils Et comment les entendons-nous dans notre propre langue à chacun dans notre langue maternelle Partes, Médès et la mythe, et la mythe ceux qui habitent la Mésopotamie, la Judée, la Cappadoce, le Pont, l'Asie. La Phrygie, la Pamphylie, l'Égypte, les territoires de la Libye voisine, des Sirènes et ceux qui sont venus de la Rome, juifs et prosélytes. Crétois et Arabes, comment les attendrons-nous parler dans nos langues de merveille de Dieu Ils étaient tous dans l'étonnement et ne sachant que, que penser, ils se disaient les uns aux autres. Que veut dire ceci Mais d'autres se manquèrent et disaient ils sont pleins de vin doux. Alors Pierre se présenta avec les onze, éleva la voix et leur parla en ces termes. Hommes juifs, et vous tous qui séjournez à Jérusalem, sachez ceci et prêtez l'oreille à mes paroles. Car ces gens, ces gens ne sont pas ivres, comme vous le supposez, car c'est le troisième du jour. Mais ceci, ce qui est, était dit par le prophète Joël. Dans le dernier jour, dit Dieu, je reprendrai de mon esprit sur toute chair, vos fils et vos filles prophétiseront, vos jeunes gens auront des visions et des vieillards auront des songes. Qui sur mes serviteurs et sur mes servantes, dans ces jours-là, je reprendrai de mon esprit et ils prophétiseront. Je ferai paraître des prodiges en haut, dans le ciel, et des miracles en bas, sur la terre, du sang, du feu et une vapeur de fumée. Le soleil s'échangera en ténèbres et la lune en sang. Avant l'arrivée du jour du Seigneur, de ce jour grand, et glorieux. Alors quiconque invoquera le nom du Seigneur sera sauvé. La parole du Seigneur. Thank you. 
pasaje de Hechos 2, una imagen muy especial viene a mi mente. Me remonto a un lugar de retiro hermoso en la cercanía de Guadalajara, en México. Una tarde allí, luego del almuerzo, miro por una de las ventanas del comedor y a la distancia veo dos mujeres caminando juntas, lentamente, alrededor del lugar. Una de ellas era mexicana y llevaba del brazo a una de las invitadas norteamericanas de la delegación que visitaba. Y le enseñaba y señalaba diferentes cosas según caminaban. Me llamó mucho la atención y emocionó mucho esto porque la hermana norteamericana no sabía español y la hermana mexicana no sabía inglés. Entonces, ¿cómo puede ser que estuvieran tan cómodas caminando, conversando y disfrutando juntas? Cuando llegaron al área del comedor, terminaron su plática con un abrazo. Conmovida, me acerqué a Sherry y le comenté que las había estado observando. Y con lágrimas en sus ojos me dijo, yo no sé español, pero de forma que no puedo explicar, entendí todo lo que mi hermana me dijo. El espíritu tradujo. Nunca había sentido el Espíritu de Dios como lo sentí hoy. Aquellos que llegamos a este país de diferentes lugares sabemos lo que es estar en situaciones en donde no entendemos lo que se está comunicando o preguntando. La migración ya sea forzada o voluntaria violenta nuestro sentido de identidad y pertenencia. Esto se agrava aún más cuando nos toca vivir en lugares donde hay hostilidad y recelo en contra nuestra. Son muy pocos los lugares en donde podemos sentirnos aceptados, amados y apreciados. Y desgraciadamente, aún dentro de las iglesias podemos sentirnos de esta forma. Yo me pregunto si te ha sucedido algo parecido a la historia que conté al inicio los espacios en donde podemos ser nosotros mismos y poder compartir quiénes somos, nuestra historia, nuestra verdad, son muy pocos. Y menos aún que se nos escuche y que se validen nuestras historias. Pero yo sé que es posible. En el pasaje de Hechos 2 se dice que estaban todos juntos en un mismo lugar. Juntos, mis hermanos. Y hablaron. Y los escucharon y se escucharon. Y el Espíritu se movió, ayudó a entender y cambió corazones y actitudes entre los que estaban allí y lo que los escuchaban. El Evangelio comunica las buenas nuevas en un lenguaje universal de amor, aceptación y afirmación del otro y la otra. 
¿Te has sentado tú intencionalmente con alguien diferente a ti y le has escuchado? ¿Aceptas el reto hoy de participar o crear esos espacios para escucharnos, compartir nuestras historias y descubrir que somos más parecidos de lo que pensábamos? No te preocupes. El Espíritu de Dios traduce. Shalom, Indiana Disciples. Indiana의 제자회 성도 여러분, 반갑습니다. 페이스북이나 인스타그램 같은 소셜미디어가 보급되면서 한국의 젊은이들 사이에서 유행했던 말이 있었습니다. 우리 소통해요 라는 말입니다. 
실제로 만나서 함께 무언가를 하는 시간이 줄어드는 환경 속에서 인터넷이라는 가상 공간을 통해 글과 사진 그리고 영상으로 서로의 생각과 삶을 나누자는 이야기입니다. 하지만 많은 사람들이 지적하듯 이런 가상 공간에서 진정한 소통이 이루어지는 것은 쉽지 않습니다. 많은 이들이 적절히 꾸며진 자신의 생각과 삶을 일방적으로 생산하고 또 전달하죠. 또한 소셜미디어를 통해 폭넓고 다양한 이야기를 들을 수 있을 것 같지만 많은 이들이 자신이 듣고 싶은 정보만을 소비하는 경우가 대부분입니다. 비단 인터넷에서만의 일이 아니죠. 심지어 1대1의 대화 가운데에서도 다음과 같은 말을 하는 경우가 우리는 많이 있습니다. 너랑은 말이 안 통해 오늘은 너와 대화하기가 힘들다. 네가 무슨 말을 하는지 도대체 알아들을 수가 없다 등의 이야기죠. 이 이야기들이 우리에게 무엇을 말합니까? 상대방의 언어 자체를 알아들을 수 없다는 이야기가 아니고 그 말을 알아듣고 이해해 줄 마음이 나에게 없다는 이야기입니다. 즉 소통하고 싶은 마음의 준비가 되어 있지 않다는 것이죠. 그렇기 때문에 우리는 언어나 소셜미디어는 도구일 뿐이지 진정한 소통은 열린 마음 그리고 열린 가슴에서 출발한다는 것을 깨닫게 됩니다. 내 중심적인 생각이 아닌 타인 중심적인 생각이 진정한 소통을 가능하게 합니다. 오순절 성령이 임하셨을 때그 자리에 있던 사람들은 각기 언어가 다르지만 소통할 수 있었습니다. 왜냐하면 성령님이 그들 가운데 계셔서 그들이 같은 마음을 가질 수 있도록 도우셨기 때문입니다. 그리고 갈라디아서는 성령의 열매를 이야기합니다. 사랑, 기쁨, 화평, 인내, 친절, 선함, 신실, 온유, 절제. 이러한 성령의 열매는 기적과 같은 사건을 이야기하는 것이 아닙니다. 바로 우리가 살면서 타인과 맺을 수 있는 실제적인 관계의 열매를 이야기합니다. 소통하는 가운데 맺을 수 있는 열매이죠. 성령님은 우리가 이러한 아홉 가지 열매를 맺을 수 있도록 도우시며 이를 통해 우리 안에 참다운 소통을 가능하게 하십니다. 성령의 도우심으로 우리 성품이 변화되고 우리 인격이 성숙해질 때 나와 타인과의 진정한 소통 그리고 하나님과 나 사이의 소통은 더 원활해질 것입니다. 오늘 오순절 성령 강림 사건을 기억하며 성령님의 역사 가운데 우리 성품과 인격이 성숙해지기를 기도합니다. 그리고 이를 통해 우리 모두 아름다운 소통을 가능하게 하는 열린 가슴 그리고 넓은 마음을 갖게 되기를 소망합니다. 
Somebody help me declare that God is great in the room. Come on, somebody shout up toward heaven and say, he's great. Look at your neighbor and say, God is great and greatly too. Be praised. Pentecost. Pentecost comes in our text, not only when the believers are together in one place, but it also comes in the presence of diversity. And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, the scripture says, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. There is diversity in this moment, diversity of geography, diversity of culture, and diversity of language. And the Holy Spirit comes in the midst of all of that difference and unifies them in one experience, the experience of the divine. The Holy Spirit comes in the midst of all of that difference and unifies them in one experience. Perhaps we might embrace a broader meaning of Pentecost, that of unity amid diversity, not that watered down kind of diversity where we expect everyone to be melted down into uniformity, but that kind of holy diversity where the uniqueness of each person's heritage and experience is valued in the divine. The kind of Pentecost where God does not require us to lose ourselves, but the kind of Pentecost where we are more fully known and understood. The Bible says all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. But of course, some of the people in the text are very much like many people today who discredit what we do not understand. We capitulate to the lowest levels of human imagination, which is suspicion rather than wonder. Yet despite humanity's tendency to minimize and discredit the wonder of God's activity among us, someone can hear the good news. And in Acts chapter 2, it is Peter who breaks forth with good news. The Bible says, but Peter standing with the 11 raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. What? draws my attention in this moment is not only the beauty of the divine manifesting divine power and presence amid diversity, but how a formerly enslaved people having been oppressed under the hand of Pharaoh now find themselves at the center of a multilingual, multicultural movement. Those who began traveling as foreigners, outsiders, and immigrants are now participating in the fulfillment of scripture. This, this is the moment that their ancestors dreamed about. This is the moment where the ancient prophet Joel spoke about. Peter proclaims that at this moment, they are living their ancestors' hopes. For Peter says, this is what the prophet Joel prophesied. And we, each of us, are living the fulfillment of scripture. On this Pentecost, come Holy Spirit, come unify us in our diversity. May we, in this moment, in our age and in our time, be the fulfillment of God's word. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Spirit come down like the days of old. Spirit come down and fill my soul. Lord, I want to be used by you to feel your power in all I do. Spirit come down and fill my soul. took control of everyone, filling them with power. Spirit come down, like the days of old. Spirit come down, and fill my soul. For several years, we disciples have called ourselves a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. I have always heard that phrase as if we are the salve looking for ways we can bring relief to the brokenness of the world. Certainly, we are that. And there are plenty of places of brokenness and pain where our presence brings comfort and hope. But maybe that is not the only way to understand this identity statement. Maybe we are called to be the scouts, a movement in that sense, who are on the lookout for the places of beautiful variety, fragmentation of that kind, where God's Spirit is most likely to be unleashed. Maybe it was not incidental that all those groups of people were present on the day of Pentecost. Maybe God's Spirit was manifest in this new, bold, and dramatic way because all those groups were present. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Cretans, and Arabs, and so many others. If there are just two or three groups, that can create a standoff, a sense of wariness, but if there are a dozen groups, 
That creates, wow, energy, excitement. Maybe that is the miracle of Pentecost. All those groups in one place, which caused God to say, that is where I want to be. It happened again at Cane Ridge, Kentucky, when as many as 30,000 souls gathered at the beginning of what we call our Stone Campbell Movement. And it is happening right now in Indiana. There is more diversity in our state than at any time in our history, and it is growing. Thanks be to God, I think that gets God excited. So what if we embrace the change that is happening in our midst and intentionally seek to be a part of a people that is diverse? Who knows what might happen? We might then feel the wind of God's Spirit blowing across us. We might feel the fire of God's Spirit within us. Our church might become reanimated in this time. If that is true, then how might we become Pentecost-primed Maybe learn a new language. You know, on the day of Pentecost, God restored the power of communication to those who were gathered there, and all were able to hear and understand one another. But we do not have to wait on God. We have Rosetta Stone. And there are other kinds of languages we need to learn too. Generational and cultural languages. If we want to be effective as God's Pentecostal people, we need to tune our ear to the words of the oppressed who have not felt heard. God's Spirit gives us the power to do so. So now I am rethinking our church's identity statement about being a movement for the wholeness in a fragmented world and remembering that there has always been a second line that we tend to say less frequently. As part of the one body of Christ, we welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us. Yes, that is it. May it be so. We thought we knew the plan. We thought we knew how to do church. And then everything changed. But we are the church. We are the people of hope. We trust God and know that change is good, that death leads to resurrection, that God makes all things new. As God told Jeremiah, surely I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for harm, plans to give you a future filled with hope. And so we dream of a church that's bold, courageous, impactful, anti-racist, no fear, no limits. We see church the new way, reaching more people, preaching good news, fighting brave battles, caring for creation, being the hands and feet of God, and welcoming all to the table. This is your church. This is church the new way. Be the new church. Be bold, be courageous, be limitless, be generous. Be the new church. Your gift to the Pentecost offering builds a future of hope in your region and across the Christian church, Disciples of Christ. Please give generously. Please join me in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Fall afresh in our hearts that we might be moved by your creative work in our lives. Fall afresh on our hands that we might serve our neighbors with compassion and grace. Fall afresh on our feet that we might walk boldly, seeking justice and mercy for all your children. Fall afresh on our minds that we might discern where you are already at work in this world and where we might join you in those endeavors. Fall afresh in ways that 
we might see you more clearly and remind ourselves that you are with us always, even on our most challenging and sorrow-filled days. Fall afresh in our congregations that we might come alive in new ways and see opportunities to be your living presence in our neighborhoods and communities. Fall afresh on our regional church that we might form connections of strength and service with one another. Fall afresh on those who serve in ministry, including those who are tired, worn, and questioning the way forward. Fall afresh in our lives that we might reflect your power, your mercy, your forgiveness, and your love. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Amen. As we come together as a body of churches to celebrate Pentecost Sunday, we also celebrate that all are welcome at the table. On that first Pentecost, the fire of the Holy Spirit allowed unknown languages to be understood and inspired thousands to believe and come together in true community, including in daily life and sharing of resources. This was the good news that Jesus embodied and the Holy Spirit empowers us to embody as well. Yet, I wonder about the reality of our open table. Does our open table include ensuring that all have food and shelter on a daily basis? Does our open table encourage us to change the way we live to truly bring the realm of God on earth as it is in heaven? Does our open table change our hearts and our minds so that we do whatever it takes to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God? Do we eat this bread and drink of this cup and allow it to nourish our ability to love our neighbor as we love ourselves? As we share in communion together, let us meditate on how we answer these questions in our daily lives. On the night before Jesus was crucified, he shared a meal with his disciples. After saying the blessing, he broke the bread and he gave it to them saying, take and eat and remember me. Then he took the cup and shared it with them saying, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out on behalf of many. Please join me in prayer. Holy Spirit and breath of life, we thank you for the gift of your love and for the opportunity to love one another in community. Yet, we admit that we are quite broken during these times of deep division and tragedy. Today, on this day of your holy fire and breath of life, we ask you to breathe in us anew the inspiration and strength to heed your still small voice and do the work of love, justice, and healing in your beautiful world. Help us to internalize and follow your fruit of love, peace, joy, self-control. And may we do this as we begin to build your beloved community. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now let us partake together of the bread and cup and be fueled for the work of God's love and healing in this broken world.
As we leave this wonderful worship space together, let us go forth into the world knowing that we are God's voice in the neighborhood, in our communities, wherever we may walk. And may we feel inspired, empowered, and never alone. Amen.